everyone, Jamie Madison here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's card is going to be featuring the Simon Says Stamp, Stamp Timber release from Kathy Zilski stamp set called Zombie Boo. I got the stamp set a little early and wanted to do something fun with it, and I thought an interactive card would be great. So I went ahead and took out the zombie hands out of the stamp set, and I stamped them down using Versafine on my Bristol Smooth cardstock. Then I went ahead and heat and boss them in clear. I then took my Arteza Real Brush pens and took four colors that are all in the green category. One is more of a yellow green, but I'll get to that in a second. So I'm gonna take the three main greens and I'm just going to put them in random spots on the hands. The way I think of a zombie hand is it's decaying flesh. So the hand is not gonna be a nice smooth transition. So I went ahead and put some dark spots here and there or where the flesh would be more exposed. I kind of went a little too deep with it, I guess. And then I went in with that yellow because as the skin's turning, it starts turns a ugly yellow color. And I just added that yellow at the very end to blend everything together. I really like the way that these zombie hands turned out. They're nice and spooky and they make a really good transition in the dark background that I'm going to be putting them in. You don't have to color in the dirt surrounding the zombie hands because I'm going to be cutting that off anyways. So you're not going to see it. After I have my zombie hands all colored in, I'm going to start moving on to the gravestones. Now the gravestones I don't have a die for, so I just took a scrap piece of cardstock and I just drew my own gravestone. You can do whatever kind of design you want to do. I just left it pretty simple for the card. Then I went in for my tree. I wanted a nice spooky tree kind of leaning towards the right a little bit. So I don't have any spooky tree dies. I know they make some, but why buy one when I can just use my drawing skills to draw one? So that's what I did because you know me. I got to save my money on some other things. I got to buy watercolors and markers and everything. So anytime I get a chance to save some money, I'm going to do that. So I went ahead and drew a spooky tree in pencil. And this is where my scan and cut that I recently bought comes in handy. Not only is the scan and cut great for cutting out your pre-stamped images, but if you like to draw and you're good at drawing or bad at drawing like me, you can draw whatever is in your mind, have your machine scan it and it will cut it out. Or you can save it for a later date and cut it out in a different cardstock or cut cut it out in a different color. So with this spooky tree, I drew it in pencil. And then when I went with my Micron pen and traced it in nice, deep, dark colors, so my scan and cut could pick up on what I wanted it to do. So skip forward, I'm going to have it cut it out and I'm cutting out it in a dark gray cardstock. So this is what it looks like. I also told my machine that I wanted it to be smaller than what I drew. So you'll see the transition of the tree and how it's actually smaller than what I drew. You can make it bigger, you can duplicate it, you can make it smaller. So it's a great machine for crafters. There's so many things that you can do with it and I'm just now starting to really get into it and find out all that this machine does. And this isn't a paid advertisement whatsoever. <laughs> I just happen to like this machine. So I went ahead and erased all of my pencil lines so the machine wouldn't pick it up. And this is what it turned out like. So here is my rough draft. And here is my cutout tree. As you can see, it is the exact tree. It's just a smaller version. And I did the exact same size for my tombstone. Moving forward, I took my Hello Bluebird grass die set that I have and I cut that in some black cardstock. It also comes with a cloud die but I'm just using the grass die for this one. And in the background you will see my background that I use some distress inks. That is one of the things that I tried to save time with on this video was I did not include the distress ink. I did record it so if you do want to see it I can throw it up in a separate video but I just took some purples and some yellow at the very end and just blended that and then used my cloud uh, stencil to add some little clouds in the background. I also used some black soot to make the top of the border a little bit darker. 
So it's a super simple background and it's nice and spooky for this card. So I went ahead and took my die cuts and I'm going to add just a little bit of a spooky element to them as well. So I took my Distress Oxides and I used the peeled paint uh, Distress Oxide and I just took my little blending brush and just blended that onto the top of my grass. I ended up doing it on both of them, but in the end I only liked it on one of them, so I kind of like flipped it. So the one that I'm blending right now, I end up flipping it over and using the black. But, I mean, you could do it whichever way you want. You don't have to blend anything on them. It would look great just being all black as well. So after I have my grass blended in, I'm going to start putting my card together. So I went ahead and placed my tree and my two tombstones where I thought that they would look good. I took my pencil and just drew a line for where they're going to be placed. And I'm going to make two cut lines on the bottom of this card. Now you can use an X-Acto knife as well if you don't want to cut completely through your card. I just went ahead and did that though. Go up a little bit higher than you think you're going to need because your tombstone is going to be covering that anyway. So if you end up going a little too high, it will be covered and you don't have to worry about it. I will say make your incision a little bit thicker is a little bit better. It's going to give your hands a little bit more wiggle room to move up and down on this track. Then go ahead and cut your tombstones in the same width that you cut your background so they match up perfectly. After you've cut your tombstones, go ahead and glue those down. And quick tip, make sure you use a washi tape or use a scotch tape and tape down the very bottom of your tombstone. That's gonna prevent the mechanism when it's sliding up and down so it doesn't get hung up on that little bit of cardstock sticking up higher like your tombstone is. So I had did that, but I didn't put it in the video until the very end because my neck mechanism was getting caught a little bit on that tombstone. So I'm gonna let you guys keep the hassle of what I had to do and deconstruct my card just to put a little bit of washi tape so it would move a little bit better. So make sure you do that. I went ahead and glued down my tombstones and glued down my tree. And then we're gonna be moving on to putting this card mechanism together so it starts being in action. If you know a different way of doing this, please let me know down below because this was not fun trying to figure this out. I know how to get them to go side to side, but up and down, that was very tricky. I couldn't get my paper to really work very well going up and down. I tried like three different um, designs trying to get my hands to go up and down. The first one I liked the best, um, and it's kind of like a, a T looking mechanism. So you have a flat end and then they connect together into a straight end. And it's almost reminds me of a brad, you know, so you put a brad through the paper and then it folds in half. So that's kind of what I was going for. So after I have my two mechanisms, I went ahead and placed them in my card and I flipped my card over and now we're going to start gluing down the actual pool tab. Now my pool tab is a heavyweight cardstock, 110 pound cardstock. I actually end up gluing two of them together to make it more sturdy. But if you have like a thicker cardstock that's more of like a book cover cardstock, that would work really well as, you know, something that gives nice grip to it. I went ahead and glued down two pieces that connect to my pull tab. So when I pull this tab up and down, those two mechanisms will move. I had to kind of push them down because I kind of had them wedged up in there. But once I got them pushed down, they moved pretty good. I did add a little bit of anti-static powder just to keep it, you know, nice and fluid, moving nice and easy. And I think it works pretty good. I think next time I probably won't use glue. I'd probably use just a tape roller or something like that just to be on the safe side because I got pretty lucky with my glue not spilling out and you know, ruining everything. I then took a piece of cardstock and cut that in half 
and glued those two halves together and this is gonna be my stopper. Next time I would use some double-sided tape. I feel like double-sided tape would have gave it more of a stopping power and it would have set up a little bit higher to keep my mechanism from going too far down. But it did end up holding up and it did its job. It didn't end up going past that point. But I should have trimmed off a little bit more because you can see a little bit whenever you push the, the pull tab all the way down, sometimes you can see a little bit of the black outline at the very bottom of the card. Other than that, it worked perfectly. I went ahead and glued down my hands. So like I said, you won't see the dirt on those zombie hands. You're gonna cut that off anyways. And I glued those down, getting super lucky gluing those down that they didn't just glue straight down to the tombstone and not move at all. So I would say use some tape next time. And also make sure you put that washi tape or scotch tape on the bottom of those tombstones. That way, your hands aren't going to get hung up. Now I went ahead and put my pull tab all the way down as far as it would go and cut off the remaining of the zombie arms so they wouldn't go past my point. And they're looking perfect and spooky. I love it. I went ahead and put my double-sided foam tape on the front. Make sure that it's not going to get in the way of your hands. And this way my grass is now hiding my zombie hands. And so you can see I used that black in the background and then I used the spooky green in the front. I thought that looked a lot better. I glued that down too. I used to use glue for everything, I guess. And I usually use tape, but for this card, for some reason, I just kept reaching for the glue. So I glued down my grass and then I trimmed off the excess here in a little bit. And I flipped it over and started putting all my foam tape on the back. Just make sure when you're doing your foam tape that you don't put it too low for the foam. So you don't want your mechanism to get caught or not be able to come all the way up or go all the way down. I went ahead and put my card base on and made sure that everything was moving great. And now we're going to do our sentiment in the corner. I thought the sentiment was so cute. Like, it goes perfect with this card, especially with them popping out of the ground with their hands. It says, just reaching out to wish you a happy Halloween. Well, to wish you a very happy Halloween, but still just reaching out, like coming out of the ground. Yeah, I just love it. I thought that was a perfect pun for this card. I went ahead and used some Versamark and then I heat embossed that in some white embossing powder. I did notice that my embossing powder stuck a tad bit, even with my powder tool. So make sure your background is super dry before you use your embossing powder. I end up get, being able to wipe it away, but it was still scary at first because I was like, oh my goodness, did I just ruin this entire card now. So you will see a little bit of that bottom hand poking out through the bottom. Like I said, I didn't trim enough off and I end up fixing that later on. Um, after the video was finished, I didn't notice it, but I don't have a pool tab or pool here stamp. So I do have a glue pen though. So I took my glue pen and I just wrote pool with an arrow going up, used my embossing powder, flicked it off, used my heat, heat tool and boom, I have a pool tab now and my little zombie hands are popping up to say hello. I did another card. It was so much fun to do these, both of these cards. It was just a blast. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next week with another video. Thanks again. Bye. Survivor.